G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Fishing Life. My name's Bill Harchorn and today I am coming to you from magnificent Mallacoota on the far east coast of Victoria. We are here for round four of the 2009 Hummingbird Vic Brim Classic Series. This is the East Gippsland Mako Craft Brim Classic and we have assembled 65 of some of the best brim anglers going around on this waterway this weekend to try and nail some of these thumping brim. Behind us you might see Team River to Seas, Doug Fayer and Dean Truman. We're going to be following these guys because at the briefing yesterday they were talking it up pretty seriously. They've got some secret spots where they reckon there's some serious fish. So I think you'll find there's going to be some action aplenty on their boat. But we'll get stuck into the tournament so sit back, relax and enjoy all the action. It's 6am for the first day's check-in. It is absolutely freezing at Mallacoota. We're on board with Team River to Sea, Doug Fayer and Dean Truman. <music> Truman's thrown on the balaclava. He's going to knock over a 7-Eleven before he starts fishing. As we said earlier, they talked it up at the briefing and I think we're gonna see some action. Getting the rods ready. And Doug's on already. Not too bad, first fish in the day, the sun's barely up. That was the, uh, the glassy bite, mate. Yep, I got him on. He'll make legal, there you go. Thanks very much. Fish number one, let's hope he goes 28. Piece of cake, he's 31. Well, that settles the nerves a bit anyway. One in the well, always a good start. You know these little guys go? Prawn, look alike. They, um, when they, when they go down, they just waft down like that. And uh, I think slowly going down through the schools, they tend to peck at them as they're going through. Got to stand here and wait for this, a very slow sinking lure flutters down through them. Just takes ages to get in there. There's Doug on the other hand, it's got a very heavy lure, it's down there in about five seconds, flat. There you go. Doug's on again for number two, and it looks like his heavier vibe is doing the damage. It's getting down into those schools that little bit quicker than Dean's. I'll bring him down to your buddy. Oh, I don't know. Thank you. Yep, 28 and a bit. It's only just oversized, but at this point, it's another fish in the well, so it'll have to do until we can upgrade later. That's a good fish. That's better. Looks like a very good fish for hopefully their third. Oh, yes, back him up a bit. Good fish. You notice in backing the drag off, what that basically does is it allows line to come off the reel a lot easier, and that way they're not going to break their leader and lose the fish. Thanks, mate. Well done, I just changed from a hard body uh, vibring lure to a, uh, a soft plastic. He wasn't going anywhere. Don't even have to measure that fish. It's a nice, um, nice little black rim, that one. Okay, that makes three. Doug seems to be catching all the fish and getting more bites than me and I can't have that. <laughs> that that's it. I'll try this one. Bit of inter-team rivalry there. Dean's going for a more subtle approach. It's still a prawn imitation but this is a hard body. The line's jumped twice. Yep. And he's on straight away. So obviously the fish are liking more a prawn imitation than some of the other vibe lures they've used. Might get that net, do you? Yes, I've got the net. I'll bring him up here in. I'll just swing around for you. Oh, he's not bad either. Okay. He's not bad at all. Back the drag off. Now again, you see Dean backing that drag off. For all the viewers at home, it's really important when fighting a fish, as you get it close to the boat, take that drag, back it off, so that you don't lose it. In deep water, there's no reason to fight a fish under really tight drag. 
He's spent. Thank you. Well done. And that's a quality fish, and that will help their bag no end. That's better. Finally got one. That makes number four. He's not a bad fish. He's got some sort of a sucker thing on his... Oh, don't take it off yeah, with a monkey weight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Don't put him on a diet, for God's sake. <laughs> Jenny uh, Craig, we don't want. <laughs> we'll have to get a few more and stick on, stick on our other fins. <laughs> a few extra grams, all the help. <laughs> um, if you have a look at the sounder, you'll see the... The fish are really stacked up on the bottom here. That's all bait fish and fish all through there. And it's not long before Dean's hooked up. By the sound of that reel, I think this is a quality fish. I'll just bring the boat around for him. He's not a baddie either. Just watch how Dean takes his time with this one. It's a good fish and there's no need to rush. They're in deep water and it's very unlikely this fish will bust him off. Good, he's only lips. Reach. Good stuff. Number five. Um, when we were just getting ready to leave this spot completely and we saw fish stacked up on the sand and we thought we might just give it a quick whirl. My mate Dean there, he just took the fifth fish for the morning. Now we can start searching for large fish because our bag at the moment will get us about midfield at best. No monster, but number five. We got a 1.6 kilo fish yesterday in the prefish, something you really don't want to catch in a prefish. But we were aware that there were some other big fish there. Um, so I think what we might do shortly is leave this area, um, go and try over there, and then we'll get back to the deep later. The plan now is to uh, just to give that bank a bit of a run. Eh, we don't know how things are going, but we'll wait and see. You don't know unless you try. And like all good fishing spots, you, uh, you always anticipate they're going to be fantastic until you fish it, and then sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Put the pedal to the metal. The beauty about changing spots in a boat like this is you get to go there at about 100 kilometres an hour and let me tell you, that is awesome fun. Oh, God, that was cold. This is one of the little offshoots, a little arm off the main area of the lakes at Malakuta. And the reason we're fishing here today is because during the pre-fish a fortnight ago and in yesterday's official pre-fish um, we discovered fish both out in the open and in up against a couple of structures but what we caught in the structure yesterday was quite a large fish and uh, we're heading back there now and just getting our eye back in and we'll see how we go. There's not a lot of um, uh, muscle or uh, other material here because that kanji has grown over the top um, I can see a monster. I can see a beauty over on the other side. I've just seen him. He's over on the other jetty, on the other pylon. There's three of them. Yeah, I see him, I see him. Here they go to try and get an upgrade. There's nothing better than sight casting to a huge brim. It gets the heart racing yep. and he's got it. Get him out, get him out. Get the boat out, take the boat out. They've sight casted to a thumping brim and it's managed to grab the lure. Quick, he's going back. I'm going, I'm going. That is absolutely awesome fishing from the boys. There he is, he's well and truly out. He's a good one too. Pump. He's a good one. Yep, he's an excellent fish, excellent fish. Okay, can you go a bit more out, mate? Can yeah. he make a big run? You can see Doug there just working the electric beautifully to try and get them away from that pier to ensure that Dean can get that fish in the clear water and straight in the net. He's exactly what we needed for our upgrade. Back your drag up a little bit. Bring him back, bring him back. Not as big as yesterday, but a great fish. Reach out. That's it. 
Well, that was worthwhile coming back here, that's for sure. So there we have it, the Captain Creek secret spot has produced the goods and the boys are pretty happy. 36 and a half, it looks small. 20, 28 and a half. Dean's happy to throw that one back in the water and replace it with the Captain Creek Monster. If you're looking for a fantastic place to take the family on a holiday, I don't think you can go past Malakuta Inlet. It is the middle of June and have a look at that sky. It's absolutely beautiful. Why don't pack up the kids, head down the highway and have a fish in winter. There's no better time really to take the family and try and teach the kids how to fish for brim. You can find them easily on the sounder and you'll get large numbers of fish and they're very easy to fish for. You'll get the kids hooked and you might even get hooked yourself. So try and head down to Malakuta in June. Don't worry about winter, get in amongst it. You can see the boats now are starting to span out and they're finding large patches of brim all throughout the system. I think we're gonna see some pretty impressive bags come to the first day's weigh-in. The convoy of brim boats and cars were lining up for the drive-by weigh-in. A big crowd had arrived at Malakuta boat ramp to see what sort of quality fish would be brought in. And you can see some of those huge Malakuta brim in that flow right display tank. Mitchell Fishing and Outdoors produced a good day and they are going to be hard to beat on day two. They're always quality opposition down Malakuta Way. The flow right display tank was showing the crowd the sort of quality Malakuta Inlet can produce. And there was some cracking brim in there. And the boys releasing all their brim after the weigh-in. Not one brim is harmed, it's all catch and release and it's absolutely fantastic for sport fishing. Doug from Team River to Sea, even though he had a great day, only managed to weigh in 3.88, even with that quality fish from the Captain Creek. That only allowed them to be in 27th, just showing how fierce the competition was. Doug trying to release his fish, although the Pelicans moved in, he managed to keep them at bay so his fish could swim away. Once those pelicans moved in, the boys started letting those fish go underneath the jetty, allowing them to get a bit of protection before scooting back out into the inlet. Okay viewers, it is the end of day one of the 2009 Mako Craft E-Skip Slam Brim Classic. We have had one of the biggest days in Vic Brim Classic history. We've had 266 brim weighed in for a total weight of 214 kilos. That is absolutely staggering. Malakuta has turned it on. These guys here don't care too much about that. What they're more concerned is, is that they are leading a field of 65 teams. Team Pro Strikes, Pete and Brad have weighed in five fish for 6.3 kilos. Congratulations, boys. Thanks, Bill. You're, uh, you're heading a quality field. You're right at the top of it. Tell me about your day. How, how did you go? Mate, we just started off normally. We made a decision yesterday that we were going to go back to where we did the pre-fish. We caught a few fish late yesterday afternoon, probably after 2 o'clock, which would have been shut down time at this particular day. Yep. Um, we decided that then that probably there was the best place to start the day and we hung in, we fished an area probably no greater than 100 metres in a stretch. Yeah. Um, and just stuck to it, yeah, basically. Um, the whole day. The whole day, yeah. So don't go away because all the action of day two is just around the corner. Say goodbye to Pete and Brad from Team Pro Strike. You'll be with them tomorrow morning.
One of the great things about the Vic Brim Classic Series is that anglers get to travel to some beautiful places all over Victoria and stay in some magnificent accommodation venues. Here we are staying at Bruce's Flats in Mallacoota Inlet at the cottage. It's an absolutely spectacular place to bring the family and at the end of a hard day's fishing, you can sit out on the deck and take in this beautiful view. Bright and early on day two, another freezing cold Malakuta morning. This one here has been the weapon from yesterday. The VX35, but in a colour that Eco Gear don't do them in. I've had to raid one of the kids' nail polishes in a really vivid pink, but if I could feel my fingers, I'd be able to tie a knot. So Pete trying the custom pink VX and it's worked straight away, he's hooked up. Now will this be 28 centimetres? It seems to be pulling a bit of line. A lot of the time there's only small fish, but if you um, miss them, drop the lure back onto the, onto the bottom, nine times out of ten they'll just come back and nail it, which is what he did. Better to catch small fish than no fish at all. You can see that custom pink VX35 working beautifully. And he'll let that one go. Where you go, mate. But at least it gives him a little bit of confidence to keep plugging away. Can Brad open the account? No, but it looks like Pete's got one this time. Now, will this be their first? Oh yeah, this one looks like it's a much better fish by the way it's pulling that line. You can see Pete drop his rod, that's just to allow the fish to run a little bit more and take a bit of shock off that initial run. Just giving the folks at home a high five to the camera there as he grabs his net. And let's see if this one's 28. He'll wait. He's 28. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. Pete's confident. Yep, he's a keeper. And it's in the bin. Looks like a 30 there. So number one, the leaders are on the board. Pete's on again. Could this be number two? I wonder if Brad's using that pink lure because Pete's definitely having success with it. It's not happy. Here's your keeper. Here's your keeper. Well, I'll just I'll bring him over here to you. Again, you can just see there's no rush. They've got the fish away from anything that's going to harm them because they're so far in the middle there. And Brad just slips that net under the fish. Very good. That's what we want. He's a little bit better. And number two should be in the bin. Not a monster, but it's better. Yeah, you know, this particular lure is a, it's made by Jazz. Um, it's a fast sinking one. It's got a very, very tight action which suits my style of fishing I guess. You can feel every vibration on them and they work really really well and, and green has been a fairly successful colour for us so um, stick with what you like. There's a lot, of, a lot to be said about confidence when you're fishing and if you're confident in the gear you're using it generally pays dividends and helps and that's the same thing with as I was saying before about the pink vibe. I'm very, very confident when I use it. Confidence is definitely what Peter's got. He's hooked up again on the new lure he's using. Could this be number three? Not very big though. Oh, it's a flying fish. <laughs> I think you'll just uh, pull this one in. No, oh, you're away. No, he's decided to grab the net. He thinks maybe it could go, actually. Maybe. Or maybe he won't. Let's just see how close this one is to the bin. This fish could be the difference between winning and losing. Because you might not. Yep, it'll do. He's easily in 29 centimetre floor plan. It's only just, but he's, he's another one for the bag. Just a reminder, 28 centimetres is what the guys have to have a minimum of. The quiet achiever! 
<laughs> Brad has finally got his score on the board. Love it. Jesus, about bloody dumb. And doesn't Pete let him know it? He's giving him a bit of curry there. He's a keeper. Well done, mate. Beautifully done. You will do. Broke the drought. <laughs> and on the pink. On the pink. On the pink. Measuring? He should be over. No, he's well over 28. Stick over this side. Here, can you? Here, that's it. Beautiful. Finally. Good one. Feel a bit better now. Four on the board, one more to get. 30 or maybe 40 fish that we've caught over the last two days would have all been on that lure that you just looked at with, with Brad, which is uh, the VX35, but been painted with pink nail polish. And I shouldn't be telling you that because every next year, every well, next comp, everybody will be using VX35s in pink. Or better still, you'll be able to buy them off the rack. Okay guys, now you've seen the four fish that Team Pro Strike have in their well, but this is where the pressure starts to build in a tournament. It's five past 11, they've only got the four, nothing too big. They are in the lead by a little bit, and now comes the time when they need to dig deep to try and get that cracking fish for fifth and upgrade some of those smaller ones. Let's hope the fish come on. You might see that a fair few boats are on the move now. The fishing is a little bit tougher today, but the fish are showing on the hummingbird sounder. The fish are schooled up, they are still there. It's just a matter of getting them to bite those lures. So let's hope Team Pro Strike can come up with something special to bring home the bacon. It's a bad time I should have known you to follow that line Not use you But keep in with current trends And the lights are going down And in your town I can't find a place to rest At the conclusion of day two's way in the top three are as follows. We had in third position coming from ninth. Team Mitchell fishing in outdoors, Aaron Dyer and Graham Deer weighed in 10 fish for 9.04 kilos. In second position, and they went in second on day two as well, Nelson Boat Hires, Chris Carson and Brett Carson who weighed in 10 fish for 9.32 kilos. But our champions, they held on. Team Pro Strikes, Peter Stevens and Bradley Bad, they took out the championship with 10 kilos for 10 fish, a perfect score and a perfect weekend. I don't know, it was real slow today. It's hard to find the fish. Yeah? Yeah, it took us a while. We've got the last one probably in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes left. So that last, to finish it off. last yeah. half an hour. So yeah, we were a bit excited then to bit of, at least get five fish. A bit of a yahoo. Yeah. Fantastic. So, Pete, you would have been loving that, mate, just leaving it till the last 20 minutes to get your fifth. That would just, you know... No, not particularly, no. <laughs> <laughs> just stringing it out. And coming in the way yeah. in, you would have thought you didn't really have enough. You're... I didn't believe so, no. I thought we'd um, struggle to get there. Yeah. Yeah, without having, you know, maybe at least two or three good fish in the bag that we'd struggle but yeah we got the fifth fish and I think that's probably the one that brought us over the line so yeah. beautiful mate well, well we'll see if these guys can keep this form going into uh meeting for the grand final we've got our next qualifying round at the Hopkins River but uh I think yous will be back next at meeting Absolutely. See if you can take it out, see if they can uh, continue that form. But that's it from beautiful Malakuta and another Vic Brim TV show. We hope we'll see you soon and look out for us in the future. The team at Fishing Life use only the best quality products, including Eco Gear Lures, Japanese technology made for Australian conditions, Trojan deep cycle batteries, Engel fridge freezers and generators, Flowrite live oil systems, Daiwa rods and reels, Minkota electric motors, and Hummingbird high definition sounders and GPS units. To find out more about these quality products, log on to www.vicbrimclassics.com.au.